right now there is no participant in the meeting i will start the meeting once participant will join <coughs> Okay, so <clears throat> hello everyone. Uh, I again welcome you all in the fifth live session for the course Product Design and Manufacturing, which is offered by NPTEL under the course code of NOC 23ME14. Good afternoon, Michael. So we are here to discuss the today we are going to discuss the course content of week six. So uh I will be asking you some questions that I have prepared for you. And I hope you will participate in answering those questions. 
and then later on i will take your your queries if you have and the questions that are posted on the discussion forum and today i have an special uh, announcement or what you can say information that i have to give you regarding the examination so that also i will be sharing today so without wasting time let's move uh, to the first uh, round of the this session uh, that will be the question the questions that i am going to ask and you have to give the answer and then we will discuss the subsequent things uh, which aligns with that question so on the screen on your screen now it will be the first question uh, it is a multiple choice question uh, i will fill in the blank so the statement that we have to complete uh, is like which is the process of proactively designing products to optimize all the manufacturing functions so the keywords here are proactively designing product to optimize the manufacturing function so we have to optimize the manufacturing function so what what are the which process is used or the process is called as so i got answer a if you said a another anyone else want to answer this question a okay yes so it is a very straightforward and simple uh, statement it says like design for manufacturing is the process which is uh, required for proactively designing the product to optimize the manufacturing functions so it uh, it not only uh, yes uh, dayaka you want to say something okay so Yeah, we are discussing about design and manufacturing. So, design and manufacturing is a uh, concept which uh, deal with optimization of the uh, manufacturing functions, be it the uh, optimization of uh, the product cost belonging to uh, like uh, in uh, invested in manufacturing of that product, or maybe uh, by minimizing the use of material or optimizing the functionality or or such things. So, all covers all comes under the design for manufacturing thing. so now the second question uh, it is on the screen what is are the purposes of a design review so we all have studied design review in this uh, week 6 so what are the purpose of a design review so is it to provide a systematic and thorough product process analysis or a formal record of that analysis or feedback to the design team for product and process improvement or all of these so for what purpose design review is uh done in the industry or the factory or you can say any firm design review is performed for what purpose the purposes are list enlisted here the three purposes are there the to provide a systematic and thorough product process analysis a formal record of that analysis and feedback of the design feedback to the design team for product and process in, improvement or all of these okay so we got two answers all of these yes so the answer is all of these only because this design review is uh, done for these purposes that like it provide a systematic and thorough product process analysis so it review the product and then what are the processes that are required for when fetching that product it thoroughly thoroughly review it and then it also document in a documented form it provides a report kind of thing so that report is sent to the design team uh, for further improvement so it is taken as a feedback uh, feedback kind of thing and then design team work on that to improve the uh, product and the process so basically uh, this design review uh, the purpose of design review is all three all the three statement that are mentioned here next question uh, question number 3 is going to be on your screen the third question again uh, it says what is slash are the problems associated with implementation of design review process so here we are talking about what are the problems that a design review process face 
so what are the problems that are associated with design review so when when in any firm uh, when the design review process is conducted so there are certain uh, limitations and certain problems that are faced so some are given here uh, unevenly matched skill option b is communication is not good between product developers and the related department third is lack of design review experience and then again fourth option is all of these so you got two option again all of these yes so in this also uh, when uh, design review process is uh, performed in any industry or any firm so there are certain level of limitations the first is unevenly match skill so if suppose there is a team of a, a, a group of a uh, there is a group of people who are doing this design review process so some <clears throat> some maybe are highly experienced and skilled but maybe some lacks with that okay so this is a subjective term you can say so skills are always subjective to your experience and to your uh, interest always so uh, there is a unevenly matched skill so maybe if someone who is reviewing a product uh, uh, one person may say uh, may give it a out of 10 give eight a star some will say no no it is fully satisfied he or she will give 10 star okay so something like that so this this creates an uh, what i guess this comes because of uneven uh, uneven skill set okay so uh, likewise like uh, it suppose there is a food that is prepared in our home so sometime if we all are eating and then uh, if we if we ask to rate so some everyone will rate differently okay so this is this is a like subjective thing so if you like that particular vegetable then you you will say okay it is a fine like it is uh, very very uh, tasty or if you don't like that vegetable although that uh, uh, that particular dish is very tasty but you will uh, you will not rate it at uh, like uh, as a dessert okay so this is the problem with uh, design review process in uh, industry also so if someone is very much expertise in that particular field so suppose if you are uh, if if this is process for design uh, if this review process is uh, conducting uh, for a component which is a electronic component so a person whose background is from electronics or electrical he will be uh, he will be a correct person to review that particular thing but if someone in the team uh, whose background is not from that electrical or electronics background he he or she is from some computer science or some some other background like maybe mechanical so he or she will not be um, absolutely uh, review that absolutely just that particular product okay so this kind of difficulty is always uh, associated in design review process second is communication is not good between the product developer and the related departments yeah this is a uh, what you can say persistence problem so the two two uh, different departments in the same firm never uh have a good or healthy relation with between each other and that's why the 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 firm suffers or maybe the product suffers okay so sometime product failure or uh, uh, is just because of the lack of communication between the developer and the uh, other departments in the firm okay so uh, this is one of the problem that is associated with design review also and then lack of design review experience so this is the era like where we are lacking uh, the exp the uh, experience people okay so who are good for uh, this design review and they are not formally available so this is again a problem that is associated with the design review process so answer is all of these for this question moving to the fourth question fourth question is a true false statement it says the design for manufacturing methodology allows for new or improved product to be designed manufactured and offered to the consumer in a shorter amount of time so is this statement is a true statement or a false statement so we are talking about design for manufacturing methodology it is used to allow a new or improved product to be designed or manufactured and offer consumer uh, in a short amount of time so either it will be a, a new product or or maybe some improved product 
so the aim is to uh, offer that particular product in a shorter amount of time to the uh, consumer market or to launch in the consumer market or make it available to the consumers so we got two options a any other okay so yes it is a true statement only so this is the purpose of like design for manufacturing as i said it is used for optimizing the process and product so uh, by optimizing that we also optimize the uh, making time okay and uh, make it uh, available to the uh, consumer as early as possible as uh, like uh, so that the the innovation that design the idea that came uh, not get much older because if you are thinking some some idea uh, that must be inspired from some other uh relative or relate, related things okay so although it is a novel idea but somehow if you if you if you not launch it on a like in a proper time so later on someone else uh, may have may got the same idea and then he will produce that component he will design that component and make it available for consumer so it will be your loss so as soon as that idea comes and as soon as that you know like uh, uh, this designing uh, design part is completed it, it is required to to manufacture that part and then make it available to the uh, consumer so uh, this design for manufacturing methodology allows uh, these things now question number 5 it is a fill in the blanks type question uh, it is on the screen it says which of the following is the organized process of taking part at taking apart a systematically assembled product so there are a systematically assembled product and we have to uh, take it apart okay so what is that process is called any answer for this okay one answer is b anyone else b or d okay so what what here we are we are what this is certainly saying this is a organized process so the process is organized for taking apart like we have to take apart a systematically assembled product so so there is a, some suppose there is some product okay so uh, just 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 uh, the example which is given in the class like a pen okay so there is a pen which is having some refill some spring based system okay and then uh, some cap okay so if we want to this, this is the assembled product okay and then if we want to take apart each and every uh, part from this assembly uh, systematically so what is that is called so tear down okay so tear down is not a systematic uh, thing okay the thing is like systematic approach we want tear down is like it's a random thing so um, as like it it says like the 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 term says only tear down means just you have to dismantle it but you are not following any rules or any uh, systematic approach okay so the answer is only disassembly okay so in this assembly we we uh, initially we make a plan to dismantle the product okay and we dismantle it uh, with a proper plan uh, that that is executed okay uh, so so that the comp the there is no harm to the other component while in tear down we just need to just completely dismantle the product anyhow it like by hook or crook we have to just uh, thing is that uh, like we have to just dismantle the uh, assembly so moving to the next question question number 6 it says which of the following avoid using reoriented assemblies so which of the following uh, assemblies are uh, like what you can say set to avoid use uh, using a reoriented assembly is it manual assembly or automatic assembly both of these or none of these one answer we got both of these 
two answers we have B. Okay. Any other answer? So reorienting assemblies means what? So suppose there is a product. Okay. So it is oriented in like this. Suppose there is a wall. Okay. This is a wall. It is oriented like this. Okay. And now we want to reorient it like this. Okay. We just need to flip the direction of component is orientation. Yes. So which assemblies says key this kind, this is uh, like frequently allowed. Like transforming the direction or transforming the orientation of the product uh, that is going, uh, not product that uh, elements are going to, which are going to take part in the assembly to complete a product. So which type of assembly allow this? I don't think so. Uh, uh, both are uh, like manual assembly also and automatic assembly. So both didn't allow this reorienting assembly. Okay, so direction of component is in possible when human. Ha, so it, it is like human is intelligent. Okay, so what you said, human is intelligent, right? So if when you go to the production, um, that uh, particular assembly line, so people, what, what people need to do, they used to like take component and fix it. Okay, the component uh, keeps coming on the conveyor belt system or some AVGs. Okay, and then they used to just put in a uh, definite position. They don't want to, they, uh, why they bother to change the orientation. They don't want to change the orientation until unless it's very uh, crucial thing. Okay. So in a mass manufacturing system where, uh, where there are, are a production line or assembly line where the thousands of product need to be uh, manufactured or assembled in a day. Okay. So they, they do not uh, like they don't want to reorient the components they want that component should come in a proper orientation they just used to pick it up and place it up okay so in both manual and automatic assembly this thing is avoided so reorienting assembly is always avoided in both kind of uh, assembly okay so uh, yes so so it is it is difficult also for human being also suppose uh, uh, like people are working and one by one if he he wastes his time in reorienting the component then it is a like wastage of his own time and then that will indirectly uh, cost to company and then wage of his own like daily wages so, so daily wages workers are there in the assembly line always so they used to this do this kind of job which which doesn't require any sense or any what do you say uh, any engineering for that they only they are trained for uh, uh they are only trained for certain kind of thing okay these are the some uh, suppose they have to put some screws so they they are uh, trained for just putting that screws they don't want they don't know ki which side of the screw like uh, do we have to put it from downside or from upside so they 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 don't bother about that they just need they what they have learned is just to put the screw okay so if the orientation, if they have to change the orientation of the component, then that will become uh, very difficult for them. Okay. So, and then or in automatic assembly that we all know that uh, it, it is deal with some robotic arm or something uh, uh, indexing machines or there. So they are already programmed. So if the orientation is changed, uh, they cannot manage it. Okay. So uh, that, that for automatic assembly, it is obvious that re re reorienting assemblies are avoided for that. So in manual also, it is avoided. Moving to next question, question number seven says, which of the following is the reversible dismantling of complex product into less complex sub assemblies or single part? So the term which are uh, important here is this re, uh, uh, reversible dismantling complex product into complex sub assemblies or single part so d option is there b option is there okay so by the statement it is very clear that yeah we are talking about this assembly but which kind of disassembly we are talking when uh, there's a complex product and we have to uh, make it less complex or uh, dismantle it into single part. Okay. So 
<clears throat> that type of uh, dismantling or uh, disassembly is called as what? So in total dis disassembly, as the word says, uh, each and every part to be thrown, like to be dismantled. Okay, so a single component, a single part, uh, each and every single part is dismantled. Then ergonomic disassembly, like ergonomic disassembly, is something which deal with the shape of the thing to make the uh, like uh, what you can say. We dis uh, like suppose uh, a very uh, what you can say very common example that we can think of is. <clears throat> Suppose we are shifting our home or maybe our place, leaving place from one place to another place. So uh, we uh, we are going to carry our bicycle, right? So we if we have a bicycle, so uh, what you want to do? Uh, do you want like if if it is not possible to carry that bicycle uh, without dismantling it? So what you will do? You will uh, uh, like open each and every part of that bicycle or. Uh, that is the one thing that you can open each and every part, each and every component, all screws and every uh, bearing and everything. Okay. Second is <clears throat> you can <clears throat> ergonomically disassemble and <clears throat> disassemble it. It means like you can disassemble uh, that particular uh, cycle such a way that you, it, it can be easy to handle. Okay. In a like particular uh, style, you can handle it or a place you can place uh, or a, uh, or a <clears throat> Or a place you can, uh, sorry, or, or, a, or it can be easy to handle, uh, or it can be placed in any of the container. Okay, and then it comes selective disassembly. Like we just wanted to disassemble only those parts which are critical. Okay, so <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> so <clears throat> sorry. So I'm sorry. <coughs> so in selective selective disassembly, what we do? We just uh, we just dismantle though. Like suppose if, if it is a working component, working like what example that we have taken is cycle. So if if there is something which is very uh, costly or that is prone to uh, maybe damage or something, so what we do? We just dismantle those part only. Okay, and then uh, that is what we call as a selective disassembly. So we are very selective to like those kind of particular elements in the particular product. We disassemble it, and then later on we can assemble it. So, uh, so this this is the like reverse uh, the answer for this question will be only uh, selective disassembly. Okay, sir. Yes, yes, Nikhil. actually, I'm sorry, sorry to bother yes. you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, I haven't understood exact difference between selective and ergonomic. So, ergonomics is to uh, mean similar shapes, kya, sir. Uh, ergonomics means what I understand is uh, like, uh, suppose, like, uh, you are uh, disassembling some component in uh -huh. uh, so that the remaining part or or the part that are disassembled are easy to handle or something like that oh okay 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 okay, okay. 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 and in selected disassembly what you're doing you are you are uh, dismantling those components which are uh, like prone to damage okay which okay. are very costly okay. or something like that mm -hmm. so for a, it there's a general uh, example you can say like uh, okay. Okay. Uh, for a, in a cycle that like if there is some mirror or something like that so you can huh. just dismantle those mirror and everything and then uh, if you, if you have put some horn, like um, fancy buzzer or something like that so you just dismantle that so that is selective disassembly however mm -hmm. ergonomic disassembly means like you just dismantle the tires so that it can be like more uh, like compact. handy in a uh, yeah, compact, compact yeah, yeah. it can be it can be put in some box so uh -huh, like uh -huh. when when the when the cycle nowadays if you purchase cycle online or something like that if, if you see so they uh, supply in a box so that mm. box is like ergonomically disassembled. Okay. 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 So, so some, something we can remember as something which is to do with shape yes, is yes, ergonomic, yes, yes, and yes, something yes. which is to do with the special component is yes. selective. Yes. Yes. yes to yes, take yes. care of some selective. Okay. Clear, yes. sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So now moving to the next question. Uh, question number 
Eight is here. Uh, a disassembly sequence plan aims to optimize product recovery through which of the uh, thing like disassembly sequence plan. So we have to make uh, a disassembly sequence plan that aims to optimize product recovery through which of uh, the following options. The options are the maximization of the cost, minimization of material removed, minimization of disassembly time, or none of these. So when we make disassembly sequence plan, so what is the so like uh, that aims to optimize product recovery? So how can we optimize it by maximization of the cost, by minimization of the material recovered, or by minimization of the disassembly time, or none of these? Okay. So one option we got none of these. <clears throat> no, so you can see one statement is positive. <laughs> so if you just clearly read this statement, minimization of disassembly time. Okay. So if suppose there's a product, uh, there's a there's a assembled product which took two hours to disassemble. Two two hours to disassemble. Okay. And we are optimizing it so that uh, with the disassembly sequence plan, this comes down to one hour. Yeah. So this is what uh, it is talking about. So uh, we can optimize the this, uh, like we make the disassembly sequence plan just for minimization of the disassembly time. So if there is less uh, time is lost in terms of like disassembly. So that is the only thing for optimization. Like cost is not like uh, how like maximization of the cost is not possible because every component is there uh, already placed. And then minimization of material re recovered. So uh, no, we don't want minimization of material recovered. We want maximum material to be recovered. Okay. So uh, suppose if you are uh, if you have a plan for uh, disassembly of some mobile phones. Okay. So uh, the older mobile phones, all the alloys or all the materials that are used or that may be recycled for further use, uh, we want to re recover it Okay, through that disassembly sequence plan. So if this term was in spite of minimization, it, it should be maximization. Okay, So if it is maximization, then, it, then this option is also correct for this. Okay, And then maximization of cost, uh, certainly we don't want to invest more. We want minimum cost to be involved in the disassembly sequence. Okay. So the option for this question is uh, C. This is minimization of the disassembly time. Ninth question is on your screen now. Uh, it says, when a system fails to perform, it can never be maintained again. Very simple answer for this. If a system fails to perform any of the desired tasks, it can never be maintained again. Yes, until unless it is not a product from China. So we, <coughs> it's a mentality, but now these, those products are also maintainable. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, so yeah, any, any system, any product or any system that is fail, uh, that fail. Uh, so there are, there are technicians, there are maintenance team, there are people who, who are specialized in that particular job to find the bug and to uh, again, uh, uh, make that part, uh, particular component or particular product uh, in its usable form, or it uh, or make it to perform the uh, its pre-assigned task. So uh, it can be maintained. Okay, so systems uh, are mostly uh, which fails. They uh, they are uh, uh, they are what you can say. Uh, they are refurbished or they are uh, uh, maintained okay or they are uh, what 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 i'm not getting that exact term that uh, that is there so we can uh, we can repair repair so we can repair the uh, particular uh, product and then make it uh, uh, make it uh, running in make it in a running condition okay so that is the thing now question number 10 is on your screen says the degree of facility with which a piece of equipment or system is capable of being retained or restored a serviceable operation is known as 
the degree of facility with a piece of equipment or a system is capable of being retained or restored to a serviceable operation what is that called is it maintainability serviceable restorable or none of these Yes, so it is maintainability. So any component which is uh, which is like having some fault, it can be maintained. Uh, like uh, by like we can uh, we can keep it and then we can repair it. Then we can restore it again in the same fun for the same function. Okay, so it is a maintainability of that particular thing. So these are the ten questions that I have for you, uh, which are which which belongs to. Uh, week six of the course. Hope these questions will help you in um, solving your assignments. So, uh, assignment due date is like maybe four, two or three days after this class, or maybe more than that. I I, I don't have that idea. So you have to look at you know portal, uh, and portal portal. So, so this is the information that I want to share. Uh, recently, you must have uh, must have uh, got. email regarding um, registration of the registration for the examination to get the certificate so if you are enrolled in this course and if you are doing this course uh, in a serious mode like if you are studying and uh, investing your time in that so why not just to go and register for the final examination so that you can get a certificate so there are some certain rules like if you have these are the uh, like that is, if you want to register you need to pay fee okay so that fee is uh, so that fee is like 1000 rupees okay that you have to pay uh, that you have to pay and the final date of examination is 29th april okay so there are two sessions will be there 9 am to 12 noon and then 2 pm to 5 pm so once you register you will uh, start getting the other information about the examination okay then the things like which are important is the criteria to get the certificate okay so the criteria is uh, there is 25% weightage is given to the assignment score and 75 weightage 75% weightage is given to the final exam score so final exam is, will be of 100 mark and the assignment score will be counted as like the best of eight assignments so total you have 12 assignment that you have to solve and submit okay so suppose if you have missed one or two assignment uh, and you if you you are not able to perform good in one or two assignment so uh, need not to worry so you have to uh, you have the, the top eight assignments uh, the score of your top eight assignments will be considered for the marking okay and uh, on an average it it will be given to a 25% weightage to the final uh, counting of the marks in the certificate okay so the final score will be uh, consist of uh, average assignment score uh, that will be 25% out of 25% uh, this will be there and then uh, rest 75% will be for this examination score that you will get from like out of 100 so if you uh, so there is certain other rules like if you are uh, you will be eligible to get the certificate only like first you have to pay the fee then you have to give the examination and you have to submit the assignment so if your assignment score is less than 20 uh, like out of 25 uh, after normalization if you get less than 10 per 10% so then you will not able to get, get the certificate so you have to maintain your this score above uh, 10 okay so that is very pretty simple i think uh, if you are interest uh, if you are if you uh, if you are attending the class uh, classes or lectures and then submitting your assignment on time then obviously you will be getting this uh, crossing this limit so crossing this 10 out of 25 it is very 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 easy then next is in the final examination uh, that is of 100 marks so it should be uh, considered as 75 percentage so on the basis of percentage you have to score 30 uh, 30 percentage of that okay so if you if you are not able to attain that 30 so you again you will not be able to get the uh, certificate even after paying the fees and all so uh, and another thing is if the sum of uh, both is put above 40 but you are lacking any of this like you may be getting 25 or 25 from here and then you are lacking here like you, you got something like 20 here so total is 45 but you you missed this criteria so you will not be able to get the certificate 
so keeping this thing in, into your mind uh, just uh, go ahead with the registration and uh, do the registration for the for the certification of uh, this course to get the certificate of this course uh, that you are attending and that will be a very uh, what you can say a, a good uh, thing to be added in your profile okay so this is the information that i wanted to share because this examination and everything uh, uh, has they they started floating mails and last date for submission of fees are there so these are the rules i hope these are the pretty simple rules that you are you may be knowing or you may not be but uh, now there is no doubt uh, about this exam certificate and an examination if you have please ask me so sir i have registered means i filled everything mm -hmm. like we had to fill all names and call uh -huh. with this uh, details and then uh, we had to submit uh, i think three options option 1 2 3 for centers mm -hmm. which we done and one then i paid 1000 so mm -hmm. once i pay it my my task is over right Hmm. But they, then that is fine. So I got yes, the yes, online sure. receipt also. Yes. But yes, they yes. haven't anything. So they haven't yet informed anything about centers or anything. No, no. So, so, so the information about the center will be uh, like uh, sent to you, like examination on twenty ninth April. So you have to wait for like maybe fifteen uh, April, maybe okay, uh, okay. two weeks, uh, two weeks uh, before, uh, like after this completion of this uh, the this course, na. Uh, okay. After twelve week completion of this course, they uh, in another one week they used to send the hall ticket. So okay. in the hall okay. ticket, you will get the information about the center and timing and everything. Okay, okay. So, so as of it, now, once I pay my fee, my my task is over. Yes, right? yes. Your time, yeah. your task is over. You just need to uh, uh, like yeah. yeah, you have to wait and attend these courses and uh, submit the assignments and all. Perfect. And later Perfect. on, you, you will you will get the hall ticket and that hall ticket will be like admit card. kind of thing so there all the informations about center and time will be mentioned correct, so correct. You, if you if you will not get in a case like if you are not getting so in later stage you can just mail to nptl they will be from they prompt okay, reply sure. to you or maybe you can call them so okay. that is the very later on task so like okay uh, if you are not getting your uh, hall ticket number by 20th april then we will do this yeah, but yeah. before that, sir uh, even they have done sir uh, one thing uh, so uh, this so i have take i have taken two courses one is this and there is also computer integrated manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, and both are on 29th and i think mm -hmm. they themselves will allot me either morning or afternoon Haan, session yes, depending sir. upon the seat availability yes, right yes, yes 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 so you you need not to worry about the uh, like classing of the courses and everything so every perfect perfect they, that is digitized and so they know ki uh, if a student is there and he is attending both course so mm -hmm. it's not possible for him to attend Uh, give the examination same time, the yeah, same yeah. same slot. Okay, so correct, they will correct. give you like uh, alternate slot for that. Okay, sir. And sir, one last question from my side. Sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. This you have said that this will be. Let's say this is the total score. If someone uh -huh. scores forty, and so the score appears on your certificate, or there is some grade A, B, C, D, or what? So uh, as far I can, I know uh, there is a score also. Okay. 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 And then they will they give you some uh, category wise uh, something gold or platinum. Okay. Okay. Category. Okay. okay. Clear. Clear. So uh, maybe just let me search because last time when I no it's all right, sir. It's all right. Hmm. Just I wanted to know out of curiosity. It's uh, all right. No, sir, this no, score no. score is there, and then uh, this also this silver category, gold category, something kind of things they give. So it says like you are out, you are you are uh, in the top five percent of the okay, students okay. who have appeared for this. Great. Or, great. You are yeah. in that twenty percent, top twenty percent, something like that. Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, this was about the course and uh, examination, course registration. Uh, moving to next. So, so this week again, uh, people are not very active on the discussion forum. They are not posting any questions. So I don't have any questions from the discussion forum now. Uh, now uh, it's your turn. If you have any query, you can ask it to me. Uh, otherwise, uh, this session is uh, over for now, and uh, uh, you can feel free to leave the meeting, and we'll meet again in the uh, next week uh, uh, to cover the week seven course content. Okay, so if you have any query, you can ask. I am here uh, till five, and I will be answering the queries if you have. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> if you don't have any query, you. you Can feel free to leave the meeting, and uh, this the 
recording of this session is always available on the youtube link and uh, the course content uh, that the content that i have uh, used today is um, shared with you all uh, on that same on the uh, nptel portal only Please, from my side, the session is completed. If you have any query, you can feel free to ask me.
So Vishek, from my side, session is over. If you have any query, you can ask me.
Coach, from my side, session is over. If you have any query, you can ask it to me.
Okay, so <clears throat> this was all in the today's session. Uh, we are closing the session for today. We'll be meeting again uh, next Saturday at the same time from 3 to 5 p.m. to discuss the course content of uh, week 7 uh, in that period. I hope uh, you are learning and getting uh, um, knowledge and information from this course and uh, this session. So I'm closing the session. Thank you very much.